Welcome back to TRCD Retro Programming. Um, thank you for continuing to watch. And uh, I made this update um, because now everything is working correctly. So I just want to demonstrate that. Before uh, I had some problems with uh, wasn't working correctly. But now, as you can see, they change direction. Um, the fighter is always in the lead. And the wizard does exactly what the fighter does, except he follows the fighter and they, um, he can swing. The only thing I haven't gotten in, and uh, it's because the code was such a labyrinth of code um, to get them to walk together. Um, you know, to where one's following the other one and they're changing directions. It was like a labyrinth of code. Trust me, I... There were so many ways to make mistakes, and I tried to make it um, as easy as possible. And I tried swinging the wrong way, and now it got messed up. But the only thing I cannot do is swing this way. But I'm going to um, code that in probably later tonight. And I'll post a update um, without commentary. You know, like a 30-second update, just so you can see these swing in the other way. And then this thing is ready to get off the ground if I don't run into any more problems. So, with the characters, and they look like they're ready to go. Um, we can, and to test it, I go up in this corner here, and I walk in a clockwise direction. If I don't get any errors, I'm fine. And then I go in a counterclockwise direction in a circle. And as long as everything stays the way it's supposed to be, uh, then it'll stay the way it's supposed to be um, on the rest of the screen. And, and that's because I used a grid overlay to check it. And so everything is measured up here. We have a, gr a good deal of area um, to place the game. And I could go anywhere with this. I, you know, who knows what's going to happen with this. I could go with a uh, whole different scheme. Um, I could make this more of an action adventure. Um, I thought, uh, you know, I could turn this into, like, a cavern or something where there's ladders and they go up the ladder, you know, the wizard steps up the ladder, or the fighter, and the wizard follows him, so pretend there's a ladder right here, I go up, and then the wizard follows him, it could be a maze, it could be anything, um, I just, uh, don't know there's so many directions that this game could go in right now and there could be monsters within the maze um i keep swinging and i keep getting get messed up or i could make it an overworld um so instead of um doing like if i did ladders and things that would be 2d basically a side scroller but i don't know um, I could go anywhere with this. We could put torches on the walls here, and but I'm thinking more of making an overworld. So when you go this way or this way or this way or this way, you come to a whole new screen of different things to explore, and we have the map screen in P mode one. You guys give me some suggestions, and you know. Um, maybe I can implement faster that way. What do you want to see, you know? Um, the only thing that has to be done here is this needs to be lined up a little better because I pushed it down. I think I have to move the wizard down a little bit more. 
and then maybe the fighter down one more pixel so we have it even there and get the health bars going got to add on the spell menu and the health bars and figure out how to make this work but I really if you ask me and I'm not trying to toot my own horn here but this is something that I think people would like to play I would like to uh, you know try a game like this I definitely would be all in on this one um, you know I just uh, it needs some more work but it took an enormous amount of work just to get to this point because of I changed the the, the, the configuration at first I was gonna have you know the guys were blinking and they were gonna take turns and it just would have took too long like Curtis was saying you know so I abandoned that idea and I was gonna go with enemy icons on the screen and then go to a separate fight arena and then back to the overworld but I kind of abandoned that too um and I and now I just want to have the fighter do the um, fighting like that but if we have this configuration here the wizard can get hit and all he has is spell power so if he wants to shoot his projectile I don't know if I'm still gonna have that as an option because this way if he shoots it behind it'll cut through here and then I'll have um, it'll destroy the sprites and I'll have to resort to P copy which would slow it down and right now I'm trying to fit this game um, in um, this in on one tape or disc one tape one one program let's say just the 23k that i'm that i'm start that i'm given and try to keep it as fast as possible by avoiding p copy and avoiding um get input all together and that's why i developed this alternative um method because get input requires dimensions and they suck up a ton of memory that's another reason I was losing memory um, on other games so quickly. And as you can see, I'm using my sword, and it's sort of chipping away at the wall. So, you know, the sword could be used to, you know, get rid of um, things on the screen as well as enemies. I, I don't know there's so many avenues that I can take uh, but I just wanted to make this quick update and before I forget I need to save the, my work because I just worked on this for about 45 minutes or half an hour before I started this video I did not save it so I'm gonna do that now I'm just co calling it Coco version 4 ABC. I'm on H now, version 4H. And just save it and list it out. Always remember to save your programs and always have a list that you can, um, a, a, uh, you know, don't forget to list it out. Um, there's no way you could do a game like this without having a list. Um, mine is on Notepad. I don't bother printing it. That would be a waste of ink. Um, but Notepad is a very good tool. And I know they didn't have this back in the day. They had to use printers. And it, it would have been much harder to make a game. Um, it's a lot easier to use an emulator and to have windows at your disposal, uh, you know, like notepad. So I can see my code here that I'm actually typing. And on the side, I have a notepad open with a printout that I can refer to and go back and forth. And it makes it a heck of a lot easier. Um, 
I can't imagine him trying to use a dot matrix printer back in the 80s or the 90s and, you know, continuously having to waste paper every time you renew your list and uh, with a program of this length, you know, you know, if you get into hundreds of lines or whatever, it would just be, a, I could see someone wanting to give up, you know, <laughs> and the edit feature on here is terrible, um, so that adds to the problem. Um, I don't know why they didn't have a cursor navigated. Um, they should have on the three. There's no reason why they shouldn't have had that on the three. And also, I don't know why they kept the same processor on the three. It's the same speed. What's the point of that? You know, now you have better agra better graphics, but it's the same. You know, one megahertz processor. They just they did a really bad job at. Um, upgrading that computer you know they added a, a few bells and whistles but they just it's just like a repackaging of the same computer with a different video processor which what good is that they didn't even change the um the editing feature to make it any better and they didn't make it any faster so um what's the point of uh, transitioning over to a coco 3 other than a few you know added graphics enhancements it's just, I don't see a purpose of, of that. I mean, I guess, um, you know, it's a little bit more beneficial, but in all reality, I don't know what they were thinking. You know, they, they just repackaged the same thing. It's like they took the computer they already had and just added, swapped out a video chip and called it a new computer. <laughs> you know, Burrito Shack was notorious for things like this. They had a whole line of computers that were really good like the tandy 1000s they were like um just they're compatible with um, ibm pcs and that's the only thing that held them that held their computer world together um because uh, they had tons they had too many different models of computers that were really um bad and i owned a couple of them you know i blew money on um you know, some of their uh, better, supposedly, you know, IBM PC compatible computers, F, um, um, not in the Coco series, but uh, I don't even remember what it was called. It was horrible. Um, I had to use an RF modulator um, on a TV set because I couldn't afford the monitor and it didn't fit on the screen right and the resolution was and the the resolution was really bad and i uh it did, it was just a piece of junk um i'm not uh, radio shack they they had good products but they also had a lot of bad products um i used to be in that store a lot when i was a kid and it was just i don't know you know i actually still have um a uh what is it called a i still have one of my um what is it called a um what is it called i can't even think of it a meter you know like a uh, amp meter and you know i that thing is die hard i've had it for like 25 years and it still works like a charm it's not digital it's it's a huge meter you know like maybe four inches by three inches or something you know and you have the probes that it's a multimeter you know and that thing still works like heck you know like i said they had some really good products and they had some crap and they had seemed to they had more crap than they had good products you know at, at some point it was kind of like pretty even you you didn't know if you're gonna blow your money or not so I eventually stopped going there and I transitioned over to other things, you know, but uh, then they went out of business. They all went bankrupt and um, they tried to get it back off the ground before they went bankrupt and uh, it just collapsed. The whole thing collapsed because you walked in the store and all they had was like cell phones and radios. They didn't sell computers anymore and... They just didn't know what the heck they were doing. Otherwise, they would still be in business, you know. So, 
But anyways, uh, that's the end of this video, and don't forget to um, give me some ideas about this game. What would you like to see? I mean, I have tons of ideas, but I can only type so fast, <laughs> you know, to code this stuff in. And um, I've already done a great deal of work um, trying to uh, make a contribution to the TRS-80, which was my first computer that I got when I was probably about nine years old, if I had to estimate. I had this computer from about age nine to about age 11, somewhere in there. And my friend had it before me for about a year. So I really started when I was probably eight eight years old on this thing and um you know they marketed these things towards kids very highly in those days everything was marketed towards kids any anytime anything new came out it was like for kids for kids for kids that was their sales pitch you know so it, I, kids really didn't have a lot of interest in computers you know and they <laughs> I don't know, but uh, that's the story. So share your stories um, with me you know, down in the messages section if you have any stories like that, you know, about the TRS-80 or Radio Shack or whatever. And uh, I'd love to see more of what you guys do as far as programming. If you have any videos, um, you know, link them in the comments so I can see what you guys are doing as far as TRS-80 stuff. Uh, so that's it, um, the end of another video, and I'll see you again soon, so take care, goodbye.